Many believe that real estate is so expensive today because there are too many people and too few properties available, low supply and high demand. This is probably true, but on the other hand, prices for real estate like land and apartments were also boosted by the hundreds of billions of new money that banks created in the years before the financial crisis. This is Waterfront Gurus giving you some interesting point of view on why you can't afford or buy or rent anymore in many parts of the world. Today, only 3% of the money that exists in the world is printed and about 97% is information stored on bank servers. That is, 97% of the money in circulation is digital. When we request a loan, credit or financing from a bank, the bank simply creates money, adding the information to the servers and lending it to us in the form of credit, with interest that can vary depending on the purpose you give the money. Suppose you apply for a loan of $100,000 from a bank to buy a house with an interest rate of 5% and 15 years to pay off the debt. After calculations, this can be converted into 180 payments or 790 USD a month. That is, after 15 years, you have paid the bank about $142,000, $100,000 plus $42,000 in interest for borrowing money from the bank. This way, several banks have been creating money out of nowhere, simply using time in their favor. And this contributes a lot to the increase in real estate prices and because banks have increasingly created money out of nowhere, this resulted in inflation. Prices have risen consistently over the past few decades worldwide. Since 2000, house prices across Australia have climbed by 150%. Previous generations bought their first homes for around three times the average income. Now, that figure is more like seven times. When COVID-19 first hit Australia in early 2020, the country was about to head into its first recession in 30 years. Over the past decade, the median home price has risen 80%. And get this. In 1950, the median home price was 2.2 times the average annual income in the United States. And by 2020, it was five times larger than the average annual income. In England, for example, house prices increased by 4,000% between 1971 and 2011. In 1950, you could buy property in North London for £1,000, which was approximately 2.5 times a teacher's base salary. Earning £400 a year, a teacher could comfortably buy a house and pay off the mortgage in a few years at an interest rate of 2.5% per annum. Today, a similar house in the same area can cost £1 million. That's 40 times the annual salary of a local teacher. Property prices in the UK didn't just go up, they took off, like rockets to the sky. But why is real estate so expensive all over the world? Since the 90s, house prices have boomed. They've gone from under four times average income up to nearly eight, but they cost roughly half that to build. So I spend a lot of time looking at houses on Zillow. And lately I noticed that even in places where houses are usually expensive, they seem even more expensive. Like here in the San Francisco Bay Area. What has the last year been like it's shocking buyers are paying 15 to 20 percent above the asking price now i had a listing in south san francisco 32 offers 31 very unhappy buyers the median home price in california is five hundred and nineteen thousand dollars, while the national median is two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. between january 2012 and 2019 the average list price for home buyers rose about 85%. The median home price in the United States only rose about 53% in the same time frame. Today, a mere 54% of Californians are homeowners. Only New York State had a lower rate. So what's going on here? The problem is in a way these days is a side effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, which ended up mixing at least three ingredients that favored demand in the real estate market. The dropping interest rates used to cushion the impact of the health crisis on the economy made financing cheaper. Lockdowns and travel restrictions favored the accumulation of savings by the upper classes who were unable to travel or attend bars and restaurants. 
Remote work, in turn, has awakened in many people the desire to take care of the house, to live in a larger, more comfortable space and even far from the chaos of big cities. Here in the United States, the jump in home values over the past two years has sparked fears that a new housing bubble could be brewing, bringing back the bitter memory of the 2008 financial crisis. It is a phenomenon that reveals the historic economic inequality that divides societies and that became even more profound after the recession in 2008. While some families who have lost their jobs face evictions, others have managed to consolidate and even improve their economic situation. Home prices around the world saw an average increase of 7.3% in the first quarter of 2022, compared to the same period a year earlier. The rankings led by Turkey, up 32%, followed by New Zealand, 22.1%, and Luxembourg, 16%. Five Latin American countries included were Peru with a 10% increase, followed by Mexico 6% increase, Brazil 4% increase, Colombia 3% increase, and Chile 1% increase. Reason 1. There is a race for space. An important part of the increase in home values, at least in the richest countries, is related to the search for more space. And this explains why the real estate boom is more concentrated in regions farther from the center in large cities, where there is greater availability for real estate. In other words, those with big, high incomes have launched into a search for properties that would allow them to take advantage of the exceptional circumstances that have arisen in these times of pandemic. Among these unprecedented conditions are the low interest rates on mortgage loans and the massive fiscal stimulus that the governments of developed countries have used to revive the economy. Added to this is a fundamental change, the possibility of working from home, and professionals who can work from home are precisely those who tend to have a higher income than the rest of the population. In addition, it is worth remembering that in some markets the demand for housing has increased, and at the same time the number of available properties has decreased. This number drove up housing prices even further. Portugal, for example, Darling of foreign investors and retirees sees the price in rises with fear. The value of real estate in the country had been growing at least since 2014, especially after the entry into force of the Golden Visa policy, which opened the possibility for foreigners who buy a property in the country to apply for Portuguese nationality. The dynamics of the pandemic has deepened the rise in prices and has made it difficult for many Portuguese families to have access to buying property in their own country. In the US, Florida and especially South Florida are examples of the race for space. The state's livable area lies between the ocean and the Everglades National Park. So yeah, not much land area available for building will result in high prices for the property available and the increased demand from northeasterners and foreigners that always bought property in South Florida. Reason 2. Foreign buyers and investor money influencing local markets. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has proposed a two-year ban on some foreigners buying homes in Canada. The measure comes as Canada grapples with some of the worst housing affordability issues in the world. Prices have jumped more than 20%, pushing the average home in Canada to nearly 817 thousand Canadian dollars, more than nine times the Canadian household income. But industry analysts say it's not clear a ban on foreign buyers will address the problem. Data on purchases by foreign buyers in Canada is limited, but research suggests they amount for a small fraction of the market. In 2016, British Columbia introduced a 15% tax on home and condo purchases for foreign buyers. Late last month, Ontario raised its own tax to 20% and extended it to cover the entire province. To make matters worse, some foreign companies have bought whole companies under shell corporations or simply push local real estate agents to buy houses on their behalf in cash. See all the cash for houses signs around your town? 
many of those companies are agencies supported by foreign money. In the US, we see the same trend. In Rally, for example, it seems that more rental agencies are getting foreign investments and they are slowly spreading around the US in general to encourage private owners to lease through them, according to a report from the National Association of Realtors. Link below. Reason 3. Banks are also buying houses. Investment firms and hedge funds buying up homes made headlines last year when the Wall Street Journal reported an investment firm bought an entire community of homes in Texas. Sunny markets like South Florida are prime hotspots for these firms. Online real estate brokerage Redfin studied the hottest real estate markets and found in the third quarter of last year, investors bought three out of four single-family homes. That is a record 18% of the homes that were sold in the United States, up from 12% a year earlier. But in some markets, especially in the relatively affordable areas, their share is far higher. In Charlotte and Atlanta, investors purchased more than 30% of the homes sold in the fourth quarter to 2021, according to Redfin. In Jacksonville, Florida, Las Vegas and Phoenix, they bought just under 30%. This passage from a text from Surviving Tomorrow explains very well the problem and gives the solution. It reads, UK's largest mortgage lender announced its intention to buy 50,000 houses over the next 10 years. Not lending out about 50,000 mortgages, but taking 50,000 houses off the market. Houses that families could own and store wealth in. Houses that people could own without paying outrageous market rents to an extractive landlord. And other banks are also doing the same. Vanguard, State Street and other financial institutions are swallowing an untold number of houses. Link below. BlackRock owns 60 billion in real estate, which means to buy 170,000 houses per year for 20 to 30 percent more than you can. Blackstone, America's largest landlorder, KKR, Carlyle Group and Warren Buffett are specifically targeting single-family homes. Even state-owned corporations advised by JP Morgan Asset Management and religious denominations are hell-bent on making you a rent slave for life. Banks and investors want alternative real estate investments to their retail and commercial properties, which may take a long time to recover from the pandemic, if, if ever at all. With remote work looking like it's here to stay, however, the pandemic and the repo effects could keep the demand for suburban family homes high. Investors bought around one in every seven homes in the first quarter of 2022. How to change this in favor of people that need a place to live? Unless something changes, there are likely to be serious ramifications of this year for years to come because home ownership is the primary vehicle to build wealth, and once purchased, the prices don't go down. The solution comes from passing policies and rules that are anti-capitalist in nature, and passing changes like that are going to be very difficult in the United States, for example, where politics is influenced by the people who have more money. Politicians will need to accept that capitalism was its own worst enemy, and for once, pass laws that support people, not corporations. That, as you know, is very hard to do, given the fact that US politics works with legal bribes, meaning donations by special groups meant to keep in place changes they don't approve. These needed changes would be Make it unlawful to buy sell a single-family property you do not intend to move into or already live in. There will need to be some language to make sure no one except corporate landlords are kept out of the market. But mass home buying will continue until we have laws that protect the housing market from these rent-seeking leeches. Push for vacancy tax. In some neighborhoods, houses and apartments are just sitting empty for investors to either sell at a higher price since things are appreciating so quickly. Investor corporations should have a higher premium or even be restricted in their activities like only allow a certain amount of transactions in a given year and possibly local subsidies for people who can show they are actually just individuals looking for a primary residence. We need to accept that capitalism, while the best system that we have, is not a perfect system and that it will not magically regulate itself. You see, everything changes in a corporation. Change is constant. Why can't capitalism change? There you have it, folks. I hope you liked this new video. 
hey comment down below if you like this content and let us know which other content you would like to see as part of this series make sure to leave us a like and subscribe i'm waterfront gurus and i'm out